Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Today we are going to talk about installing WordPress on your own hosting control panel. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant. Now, today we're going to look at websites. And if you have investigated building an author website or a website or landing page for your book, you might have encountered WordPress and been told it's the best place to go. There are actually some very good and valid reasons for using WordPress. And so I want to do this brief little video here talking about installing it. Now I have a separate video on the channel already about the differences between a site at WordPress.com and what you get on WordPress.com. Org. So for a deeper dive, have a look at that video. Briefly summarizing though, for the purposes of this video as a brief summary and a reminder, WordPress.com is a company where you can sign up for a WordPress site and have them host your site and keep everything on their platform. They have some free options and they have some paid options. You can buy your own domain name, link it to their site, and then you can utilize their tools to build a website on their self-hosted platform. For the record, I never recommend this. They have too many restrictions, it can be hard to get your domain away from it, and you have zero control over your server. Which you might be like, I don't know anything about a server, I want control. No, you are going to have a lot better mileage to hire a web developer to keep an eye on things and to answer the questions that you have. You want to go with the WordPress.org, which is where you're going to download and install the self-hosted version. Now, when you buy a web hosting uh, package, you have to understand you need a domain name and you need a hosting package. Okay, I'm going to recommend you avoid GoDaddy. I know a lot of people know about them. A lot of people are like, it's the best. The fact of the matter is I am a 10-year experienced uh, veteran in the web design world as a full-time job. And I've been doing websites since back when they first hit the market. GoDaddy is well known because of their marketing strategy, but they will nickel and dime you to death. They will treat you like you don't know anything and they will use your own ignorance to charge you way more money than you should be doing. For example, you want an SSL. We have technology to have free SSLs and many hosting companies do support a free SSL. GoDaddy refuses to support the technology. They want you to pay them an extra $80 on top of their already expensive hosting packages. They're also going to try and upsell you tons of other services that they will not help you set up that you'll buy and they'll be like, hey, you have the service, congratulations. They will not tell you you need to configure it. And you could be spending hundreds of dollars on unneeded, unnecessary, and even completely useless things, but you don't know the difference. This is why hiring a good web developer will actually save you a ton of money. I also recommend avoiding the companies that are owned by a company called EIG. And you just have to look up the current list of EIG companies and cross-reference it. The big ones right now, they have HostGator and Bluehost, terrible companies. While they work a little bit better, you can, in some instances, get the free SSLs on their technology. They, are, they have very bad support. I personally use A2 hosting where I have an affiliate link. I have a site ground hosting. Uh, I have Host Papa, which I do not have any affiliate links with, and in Motion hosting. I think I do have a link for that. I'm not sure if I had one here on Writing Done Right. But regardless, those are the companies I might recommend right now. There are a lot more decent ones out there, but those ones I just mentioned, they offer free SSLs. Their pricing is good and their support is also good. So you wanna go with one of those. Now inside of one of these hosting companies, they will have a thing that might be called Softaculous or Fantastico. It depends on which one of the settings that you have. This is an easy script installer. Most hosting companies have one of those two. You can click in there and just push a one button click to install WordPress. If you do that option, you just give it the admin username, you give it the domain name and let the thing go and it will run a script and it will generally keep your site up to date. Those are good ways that you can run it. But what we're going to do on the rest of this video is I'm going to show you how to manually install a WordPress website outside of those. 
I prefer that method because I have more control over it. And there are times, by the way, you want to hold off on an update for a short period of time just to make sure it doesn't break something. And the Fantastico scripts, sometimes they don't let you wait. And that is one of the things that we need to stop and look at. So we're going to jump on over to the computer and I'm going to show you how to manually install WordPress from WordPress.org. And it is absolutely simple. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at that. So over here on the computer, we are at WordPress.org. Remember, this is different from WordPress.com. And click this blue Get WordPress button, and that's going to download a zip file. I've already downloaded the zip file, and I have opened it up. And you just unzip the file, just drop it directly onto your uh, desktop here. And then we are going to get to what we're going to do with that in a moment. Now, the next thing we want to do is inside of your control panel. Now, I actually have a full tour of everything on the control panel on my um, business um, YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and just link that down if you need some general help understanding what WordPress is. Then I'll go ahead and show you uh, if you need some general help on how to use cPanel. I'll go ahead and link that down below there so that you can go ahead and have a look at that. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to actually just manually upload the files. This is, like I said, this is this is the considered the hard way to install WordPress, and it's actually very simple. The first thing you're going to need is you are going to need to set up a database. So inside of your cPanel, find MySQL database wizard, and you can go ahead in here and just enter a database name. Now, some groups will just do like this, or if you have a Softaculous or something that's going to get, say, WP1. You do want this a little bit more complicated than that. Um, so, let's see, LILDB, something like that. Uh, it's just going to prevent hackers from trying to guess what that's going to be. The chance of that actually having any real issue is extraordinarily slim. Let's make sure that I have seven characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we are good there. So now the database is going to be named. And this guy here would have highlighted life and li underscore wp l i l d b and then i have it set right here that the user and the uh, the user and the um, uh, database name are going to be the same you want to go ahead and just make note of what that's going to be and then click your password generator you really will only need this password one time so do not bother changing this certainly don't set this to anything easy just go ahead and make a note of it so what i did off screen here is i just saved the, the password and the database name and the username to uh, as just a clipboard here just to have a copy of it. Go ahead and hit create user and then assign all privileges. Hit next step and now we have our database is all ready to go. Now the next thing you're going to need to do is you are going to need to transfer the files to your server. I recommend using FileZilla for this. So FileZilla is a cross-platform uh, system, so you can use it on Linux here or on Windows, on Mac. And let me see if I actually have this already set up. Yes, I do. So if I did not already have that set up, you will have a control panel login. Your host name is going to be FTP dot, and then whatever your domain name is. So in this case, it's uh, lifeinlinux.com. Or you can alternatively just use the IP address of your server. You will have that information available to you. I know, for example, because this is my dev server, that it's 68.66.204.33. So you can get in there with either of those of the host name. The username and the password are going to be the same exact username and password you use to get into cPanel. Now that we are over here, um, you can see this is the same account that I'm using to play around with and do some tutorials on PHP list for newsletters for authors. So you can see the subdomain for that. What we're going to do is go into our public HTML and then I'm actually just going to clear these guys out. Just leave the CGI-bin folder there and leave the well-known folder there. Those two are required for the server. Although if you accidentally delete them, you're not going to break anything. So we're just going to go ahead and remove these server files here. 
And all we are going to do now is we're going to open up our folder, which has the extracted WordPress files and just copy them all directly into the root of the server. So this is going to take just a few minutes to transfer over. You can see there's, it's transferring 1900 files, 47 megabytes down here. And uh, this will, like I said, it'll take just a few minutes to transfer over depending on the speed of your internet connection. All right, so here we are. We're just wrapping up the last few files. I didn't keep note of the clock, but it does look like that was right about five minutes. All right, so now we're just going to go right to the domain names. This was lifeinlinux.com, and this is going to load up our install screen. So go ahead and select your password here. It's going to tell us that we need database name, username, password, database host, and table prefix. We will walk through what all that is. So database name, these are the database name that we did. And remember, we set the database name and the username as the same. And then we did our password. So we're going to paste in the password. And then database host, this is usually local host. So you can go ahead and probably just leave that the the same. The only case where it's not local host is if you have a very small or a very obscure or a very old server. For example, if for some reason you still have an old Plesk server from GoDaddy, your databases are going to be on a different server and they'll tell you what that is. But nearly everything, and if you're on cPanel for sure, it's going to be local host. So just leave that the same. And then table prefix, uh, you can set this, um, you can set this just what it is, WP. If you are running multiple uh, WordPress installs on a same database, which I would not recommend doing, then you're going to want to do a separate um, a separate name or beginning for that. Let's we'll go ahead and leave that the same. It's going to go through, uh, says OK, run the installation, give it a site title. I'll call this guy Life in Linux and username. Now, you're going to want to take note of your username, and you can change your password, or you can leave this one here. I'll just go ahead and use this one. And your username, make sure it is not admin. Do not use admin for a WordPress site because there are botnets that attack WordPress sites. This is the downside of WordPress. It is so popular on the web that botnets simply throw admin spam attacks on every WordPress site that's out there. So if you use admin or if you use um, the domain name, which in this case would be Life in Linux in your username, you are going to get hacked. It's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, and it will probably be soon. So do something complicated. Um, I might do something like, um, uh, let's, uh, let's go with uh, Tom Admin LIL, something goofy like that. Um, or maybe we'll do uh, R D W I L L A M or A D. Let's go ahead and just do that. It's weird, it's obscure, and uh, it's just it's going to be a fairly safe, very, fairly uh, secure system. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use whatever password they gave me. I'll show you where you can change that later. And then your email address, this does actually need to be in there on the new versions of WordPress. It is actually a little annoying. They keep on adding a lot of these little annoying things. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter the um, email address for my web design company because this is what I send everything to. Now, search engine visibility. If you click on this button, it's going to add a robots.txt file that's going to prevent search engines from indexing the site. This is good to do for your early development because you don't want the site really indexed, but it'd be better to just turn on a maintenance mode on the site. So I generally don't turn that on. Although if you do turn it on, you can disable it later in the WordPress settings. Go ahead and hit our install WordPress. And here is the username and the password. And now we need to log in. And then we'll go ahead and show you this. So let's go ahead and paste in our username, paste in our password here. And then now we are getting logged in. Of course, you can go to the front of the site as well. Hey, hello world. We have our, our sample page. We have our sample blog posts, archives, all this kind of stuff here. 
All right, so if you want to change your password now, just come on in here, find your username. Note, you cannot change the username, but what you can do is you can set a nickname. So if I wanted to go ahead and set my name in there, we'll do that, and uh, let's do nickname of RWD. Now that I have those, I can come down here and I can choose what I would like. So this is if I'm doing a blog post and I want the author post listed, this is actually going to list what it is. So I might do something like WRD. Here's your email address. If you change it, you are going to have to verify the change in email address, which is kind of annoying because if you accidentally entered the wrong email address, the only way to fix this is to hack into the database and fix it manually. It's kind of annoying, actually. Um, over here, you can upload a profile picture, and to generate a, uh, a new password, you just go ahead and hit this and then enter whatever password you would like inside of here. All right. If you are wanting to use a weak password, you have to confirm the use of the weak password. In my case, I don't want to change anything there. So I'm just going to click back and hit leave page. All right. Of course, the other thing in here is if you want, you can change your, your theming. So you have a variety of different theming options available to you. I've never actually really used the coffee one, but I like coffee. So let's go with Go with that, all right? So there's a few things you might wanna do um, out of the gate here. Um, I, I don't think I wanna go too much further on this just because uh, we'll, maybe what we'll do is we'll do full tutorials about creating a site. Um, I'd recommend adding a different theme. You can hit your add new, and this is going to find a variety of free themes that are available to you, or you can upload one if you have purchased a theme. So you're going to want to do something that you can do and makes work uh, makes it work with an author site. And that's why I think what I'd like to do is spend a little bit more time, do a separate video about how to get started. Now, there are going to be a few plugins I recommend you install out of the box. First, these guys, if you're going to use the anti-spam, you need an account with this, go ahead and enable it. Hello Dolly is useless garbage and it should have been removed from WordPress active default a long time ago. And people target this as a hacking target. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these because yeah, I don't need any of that. All right. What we are going to do is the first thing is you do want to run a maintenance mode. You want to get rid of the original. Well, you might want to get rid of the original block editor. The block editor is called Gutenberg. You can see it's right here. You can see thousands of people who review it and it is not liked at all. It is atrocious garbage. This is actually the reason why I personally am steering people away from WordPress many cases because the new block editor is damn near impossible to figure out how to use. It is not user friendly and it completely destroys everything that WordPress was made popular by, i.e. I'm going to get in there and create a page and it's as long as you can get in there and you can write on a Word document, you can create a page in WordPress. Nope, they've gotten rid of the block editor and now we have this nonsense. And notice that it's gotten rid of all of the UI theming, so it's difficult to get out of here back into the basis. Um, everything of these are separate blocks. Um, I want to start typing a new paragraph. How do I do that? I want to, I guess I have to make sure it's there and hit enter to get a new paragraph. It's not easy to use. It's, it's an entirely horrible mess. Um, and half the time it doesn't update right. It doesn't work right. Let's go ahead and leave the page. So let's go ahead and get rid of that nonsense. Uh, and this is most people do. Now, many people say to install the classic editor. There's actually a better one. It is called Disable Gutenberg. The difference between these is that the classic editor, oh, did I not get it right? Let's hit, just hit disable this one here. So you can see it doesn't have as many uh, active installs. Most people just know about the classic editor. The difference is the classic editor plugin adds a classic editor with the slow, lazy loading JavaScript that WordPress has been cramming down, which is great if you have a supercomputer. Like you're not going to notice my computer here. Um, have any sluggish issues, but that's because this computer is built for video streaming and encoding, which is a very beefy system. For your average run-of-the-mill computer that you might be running on, WordPress is going to slow your system down these days. What Disable Gutenberg does, though, instead, is this will actually go in and it will... Uh, 
remove all of the new garbage they're putting in and literally restore the old version of doing WordPress. So now we're gonna go back to the same page. And now the reason it's looking similar, you can see coming down here, the, um, it still is gonna look similar because of the code that we have, but this is the stuff that Gutenberg starts adding in. See all these guys here? All of this extra stuff that keeps on getting added in by Gutenberg, all of this is actually gonna hurt the SEO of your page. In other words, it's gonna make your page harder to find on the internet. Okay, so that's really, uh, really the challenge. You can see now that we have all of our um, office type tools up here. You can easily go create a new paragraph. You can easily add media. Why they take this stuff out is so totally beyond me. It's actually staggering. Let me actually just delete everything in here. And this is the content now. All right, so there we are. There is that. So that's why I recommend that. Now, oftentimes I will add both of them in. They won't uh, fight with each other a whole lot. Okay, the next thing that you are going to want to add, particularly if you're using one of my recommended hosts and you will already have an SSL, is let's go ahead and add the plugin called Really Simple SSL. This guy here is going to force all of the connections on your website to go with an SSL. So we're going to go ahead and install it, hit go ahead and activate it. And when I activate it, I should actually have to log in again. It looks like it's um, it's not doing that. I'm going to enable the 301 redirect and I'm going to dismiss all really simple uh, SSL notices. Now our website is loading on an SSL and we will be more secured for that. All right, the next plugin we want to do, and I can never spell the word maintenance, so pardon me on that. All right, so these guys here, some of them keep on getting bought and sold and sold and bought and bought and sold and sold and bought. Right now I'm using WP Maintenance Mode by Design Modo. This is the one that I recommend. So go ahead and use that. And when that is good, just go ahead and hit your settings and hit activated. So this means that now when you are not logged into the site, then the site will be offline. When we are here developing in the site, we can see it just fine. But if I pull up here a secondary website and I load this guy up and I go to lifeinlinux.com, since I'm not logged in under this browser, I see this maintenance mode. So this is the better option rather than having a robots.txt file that prevents your site from getting indexed. It's better to lock it behind maintenance mode while you are developing it. So the next one is SEO. Now there's two of them and they're, they both are very good. One of these is Yoast SEO and the other one is all in one SEO. There's, um, uh, these are the two, uh, Yoast is probably a little bit more popular. You can see, you know, about twice as many users. I find Yoast to be a little bit more annoying in the word, sense, word fence sense uh, versus all-in-one SEO pack tends to not be kind of in your face and really annoying. So I generally prefer all-in-one, although most professional SEO guys will generally use Yoast, mostly just because it's what they're used to. Uh, same reason somebody's gonna tell you to use Microsoft Word instead of you know, LibreOffice instead. Um, but they're both very good. I personally recommend all-in-one SEO pack when I'm in charge, but Yoast is also good. So you want one of these two installed. So now we've added a few different plugins that are that are decent, that will help keep the site secure, allow you some basic functionality. Uh, we'll talk about doing themes and settings and other stuff in a future video. So there is a little bit of basics about getting a WordPress website installed. Once again, if you would like to uh, pick up a hosting account somewhere, I do have two affiliates on the website at writingdoneright.net forward slash affiliates. A2 hosting is where I'm actually hosting this one, and we also have SiteGround. Uh, other ones that I mentioned at the beginning of the video are Host Papa and InMotion Hosting. Um, in, mo um, in motion, I 
do have an affiliate account, but it's not on the on the site anywhere here. Maybe I'll add it eventually. Um, but uh, Host Papa, I do not have any affiliate accounts with, but we are using that with uh, some of our clients right now, and it's actually a very good, uh, very good one as well. So there we have it, folks. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, if you do, then go ahead and use the contact form over here on the website. Get a hold of me. You can sign up on the um, newsletter list as well if you are interested in that. And we will see you next video. I hope that we have helped you to get your writing done right.